Pleasant morning to all of you. I am Jonah B. E. Arevalo, your MC for the 35th anniversary of the Nutrition Research Information Network or Nutrinet. Congratulations, Nutrinet! Welcome to all of you joining via Zoom in the celebration of the Nutrinet 35th anniversary with the theme Nutrinet Thriving During the Pandemic. I am delighted to introduce and help unfold the lineup of presentations prepared this morning. But before we officially start, let us go over a few reminders in today's event. First, kindly accomplish the online registration form through the link posted in the chat box. Please click on tinyurl.com slash Nutrinet 35th Anniversary. And then second, for proper identification, please use this Zoom name format. Your affiliation or your institution underscore your first name and last name. Please see the example on your screen. Third, kindly turn off your microphone and webcam. You can find the icons at the lower left side of your screen. And lastly, if in case you get disconnected, please click the same Zoom link given kanina. Thank you. Now, let us begin the program with an invocation followed by the Philippine National Anthem. Oh, 
Mga Kababayan, ang Pambansang Awit ng Pilipinas. Once again, good morning everyone. At this point, let us acknowledge our distinguished guests. First, our Nutrinet Governing Board Chairperson, Dr. Imelda Angeles Agtepa. And the Vice Chairperson, Director Richard P. Burgos. And we also have with us the Governing Board members, the Nutrinet Technical Committee Chair, Dr. Milflor S. Gonzalez. And the Nutrinet Technical Committee members, let us also acknowledge former Nutrinet Governing Board Chair, former DOST FNRI Director, and former NFP Chair President, Dr. Rodolfo F. Florentino. Former Nutrinet Governing Board, cha board, board Chair and former DOST FNRI Director, Dr. Corazon B.C. Parva. Former Nutrinet Governing Board Chair and former DOST FNRI Director, Dr. Mario V. Capanzana. Former Nutrinet Technical Committee Chair and former Chief SRS, Dr. Zenaida V. Narciso. And we are honored to have with us Dean Shirley Guevara of the UPD CHE, NFP Chair President Victoria Manez, Dr. Winnie Xiao of University of Perpetual Health D DJG EMU, and Dr. Mary Ann Gili Ramirez of SLSU, Dr. Juanita M. Costillas of SLSU. Dr. Maria Veritas Luna of CCA Manila, Ms. Charity Tan of DOH KMITS, and Dr. Vivian Fe Padrilan Tamacho of UPCPH. We'd also like to acknowledge former Nutrinet Technical Committee members, Ms. Gina Canceran, Ms. Maribel Palafox, Ms. Rita UC, Ms. Rosario Henato, and Ms. Victoria Sandoval. Let us also acknowledge the Medical and Health Librarians Association of the Philippines or MALAP President, Mr. Dancelo Auristelo T. Lagostan, and the MALAP Board of Trustees, Nutrinet Adopted Libraries, Laguna State Polytechnic University, Santa Cruz, Nueva Ecija University of Science and Technology, Sumacab, Cavite State University, NAIC, Cavite State University, Rosario, and University of Rizal System, Panay. To our partners and to all our dear participants, good morning. We are grateful for your presence and we are glad that you can join us in the virtual celebration of Nutrinet 35th anniversary. Let us now proceed with the opening remarks by none other than the Nutrinet Governing Board Chair, and the DOST FNRI Director for and Scientist for, Dr. Imelda Angeles Agdepa. Let us all give Dr. Agdepa a virtual round of applause. A pleasant morning to everyone. I warmly welcome all of you to the 35th anniversary of the Nutrition Research Information Network or Nutrinet. Let us all acknowledge the presence of our Nutrinet Technical Committee members, adapted libraries, partners, our esteemed keynote speaker, 
Dean Mary Grace Golfo Barcelona of UP School of Library and Information Studies, and to all our dear participants. It is truly an honor to be with you in this milestone event. Let us have a little flashback Friday. Five years ago, in 2017, some of you may remember or even participated in the celebration of the 30th anniversary of the Nutrinet, which was likewise a milestone organization for us. It was indeed a joyful celebration where everyone gathered and had a chance to greet, talk, and reminiscence all the good memories and accomplishments of the Nutrinet through the years. Three had passed from 2017, something unim unimaginable happened, and that is the outbreak of the COVID-19, which eventually led to a global pandemic. The national government had to make quick and drastic decisions to manage the spread of the disease. Each of us was affected by the sudden changes in our daily routine and environment. We had to follow safety protocols like social distancing, physical gatherings were strictly prohibited, and everyone had to wear face masks and as much as possible avoid talking to others in the public, which was very different from what we were accustomed to. As we are aware, our, an organization like the Nutrinet requires interaction among members in conducting regular activities to carry out its mission. However, all of these had to cease temporarily, although this period was very challenging. I am very much thankful for the flexible capacities and capabilities of the Nutrinet members. The network was able to adjust and strive to continue even amidst these challenges. The theme, Nutrinet Thriving During the Pandemic, is meaningful for the 35th anniversary. This reminds me of a quote by Oscar Wilde, a popular literature figure who once said, when it rains, look for rainbows. When it's dark, look for stars. Now I am confident that this is what the Nutrinet has shown amidst pandemic. Instead of focusing on the obstacles and challenges, the network focus for opportunities to move forward and adapt in these difficulties. And of course, in these difficult times, with the help of technology and the capacities and capabilities of the members, we were able to push through with a variety of online activities like virtual meetings, monitoring, orientation, and webinars. I understand that these are not all very easy to plan, prepare, and execute. This is why I am also very grateful for the support, openness, and cooperation of the members in all the Nutrinet activities. All this will not be possible without your help. Now today, I am very much delighted that we are all here gathered once again, even via Zoom, to celebrate the network's 35th year I am hopeful that we will soon be meeting each other face to face in the near future. I strongly encourage everyone to look forward with optimism and offer our selfless effort and untiring support as the Nutrinet continues its mission to capacitate librarians and information professionals. Let us tighten our bands to strengthen the food and nutrition information system that would ultimately benefit our stakeholders and clients that we vowed to dedicately serve. Once again, good morning. Keep safe, my dear friends, and be well nourished in body and mind. Happy 35th anniversary, Nutrinet. Thank you very much, Dr. Agdepa, for an uplifting welcome message to everyone. You are absolutely right about looking forward with optimism. Look for the rainbows when it rains and look for the stars when it's dark. As members of Nutrinet, let us continue to offer our selfless effort and untiring support for the years to come. Before we proceed, let us also acknowledge the presence of Dr. Ricardo Sandalo, of UPLD-CHE. 
So we hope everyone is ready for another inspiring speech. But before that, let us get to know more about our keynote speaker from our Nutrinet Technical Committee Chair, DOST FNRI Officer in Charge, Office of the Deputy Director and Chief SRS, Dr. Milflor S. Gonzalez. Let us give Dr. Gonzalez a virtual round of applause. Thank you, Ms. Jonavi, and good morning again to everyone. And may I also uh, repeat the greetings of our dear director, Dr. Imelda Angeles Agueta. Happy anniversary to all of us. It is with great, great pleasure and honor to introduce our keynote speaker for the Nutrinet 35th anniversary celebration. Our keynote speaker graduated from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, with a bachelor's degree in library science and a master's degree in library and information science archives and records management track from the same university. She finished her joint master's program in archival studies at the University of Manitoba and University of Winnipeg. Currently, she is a candidate for PhD in anthropology. In 1991, our keynote speaker started working at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, as reference librarian. Then she worked as assistant librarian at ICES International Resource Center in 1992 and went back to UP Diliman as college librarian in 1994. Her other work experiences include reference librarian and economic development specialist of NEDA, library specialist of the Associates of Rural Development, Governance, and Local Democracy Project, officer in charge of administrative services department, and head records and office services division of basis conversion and development authority. University Librarian, LIS Program Head of Birhen Milagrosa University Foundation, Senior Lecturer of the School of Library and Information Studies in UP Diliman, Archives Assistant under the Internship Program of the University of Manitoba Archives and Special Collections, Administrative Assistant at Access and Privacy Office of the University of Manitoba, Assistant Professor Two at the School of Library and Information Studies of UP Diliman. And currently, she is the Dean of the School of Library and Information Studies in the same university. Our keynote speaker received various awards and scholarships, both national and international from 2002 to 2018. She is an active volunteer as chairperson, lecturer, evaluator, coordinator, and other similar functions in different committees and organizations. Part of her credentials is being the author and co-author of manuscripts published in reputable journals and credited distinct paper presentations and public lectures both local and international. Her research interests include archives and culture, preserving cultural heritage, data privacy in the Philippines, and information preservation, among others. With her professional accomplishments and achievements, our keynote speaker will surely inspire us to strive hard and be the best librarians and information professionals of our generation. Now, may, it is my honor and privilege to welcome Dean Mary Grace P. Golfo, Barcelona. Let us give her a virtual round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Gonzalez. Ma'am, okay lang po. Pot up po tayo with Dr. Gonzalez and Dean po. Hi. Po. Sure. Po. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Dean. Okay, three, two, one. Wait lang po. Taba po. In three, two, one. Thank you po. 
Ang Maraming participants po. po. Ang participants po natin, mamaya po ulit tayong photo. Salamat po. Okay. Thank you po. So again, thank you very much, Director Gonzalez, for the kind and comprehensive introduction. Good morning to the Governing Board and members of Nutrinet, distinguished guests, and partners and colleagues in the information science profession. It is indeed an honor to be speaking before you today on the 35th anniversary celebration of Nutrinet. I am grateful to Director Imelda Angeles Agdepa, the Chair of the Governing Board of Nutrinet, for this opportunity to take part on this celebration. Likewise, allow me to congratulate each and everyone who has become a part of this milestone. This is an event worthy of celebration to highlight the hard work that you have put into this partnership to keep serving the community of scientists and researchers on food nutrition and related areas of research for 35 years. Hindi po biro biro ito. As I was writing my message today, I imagined the environment when Nutrinet started more than three de decades ago, around the late 1980s, or to be exact, 1987. The birth of Nutrinet also coincided with the introduction of automation in libraries. It was around this period, towards the end of the 20th century and beginning of the 21st, that the libraries have transformed from builders and preservers of collection to information nodes that connect information seekers with resources that can be found outside of their libraries and even from the different parts of the world. It was also around that time that Google came into our lives and into the library arena with promises of making all the world's information available to everyone. And we wonder, how can all the printed collections of traditional libraries be made available and accessible to everyone? This was also the time when computers were being introduced. Naalala ko pa nung unang information handling and processing course na kinuha ko noon, noong panahong nasa undergraduate pa ako. The threat of libraries becoming a passe or obsolete and dispensable loomed the environment when these large, large frame and small frame computers were introduced. Many believed that computers would soon take the place of libraries, but we librarians and information professionals knew better. We knew that it was impossible. So we continued to go along the tide of technological development we took training courses geared towards learning traditional library services while slowly being introduced to computers. Dun sa unang subject ko ng automation sa library, natatandaan ko na hindi pa kami hinayaang tumipas sa totoong keyboard ni nung aming dating professor, ang namayapang si Professor Pat Carino. Ang ginawa niya, gumawa siya ng dummy keyboard, gawa sa styrofoam, na siya namin ginagamit para mag-practice, para makapagtipa sa keyboard. And I recall, the more pressing issues during those times, more than automation, were the dwindling budget of libraries, lack of qualified library personnel, and the growing research requirements of their target clients. Librarians and information professionals were faced with the questions, how will the meager budget can their libraries expand their collections? While at the same time, make them more accessible to their target clients. How can they provide quality services and respond to information requests given their understaffed situation? Yun din ang panahong pagka nagko-cost cutting ang mga opisina, unang-unang tinatamaan ang budget ng library. Tama po ba? These challenges give rise to the establishment of collaborations and partnerships among libraries and resource centers. These collaborations and partnerships have become popular and most cost-effective solutions to the challenges faced by libraries. 
With library collaborations and partnerships, the limited collection of libraries would then be expanded by virtue of the agreement among members, member partners, to share their collection and allow their respective researchers to access their physical collections through services such as interlibrary loans and cooperative collection development, among others. These, I, be, I believe, may have motivated the 14 pioneering members of Nutrinet, of Nutrinet to link up and establish the network. With the main purpose of establishing a specialized information system in food, nutrition, and related fields in order to achieve an efficient flow of information required by the nutrition and nutrition-related research and development programs or projects of the network members and the rest of the country's scientific community. Tama po ba ang aking nakuha sa inyong website? This objective very much mirrors the endeavors of other libraries, libraries, which also hurdled the challenges of that period and the prevailing dwindling, dwindling budget of libraries during that time. As the years passed by, other challenges added up to the already perennial challenge of limit, limited budget. One of the new challenges was the development and application of new technology, which, as Google claimed, would deliver its promise to bring information at the tips of everyone's fingers. Actually, even long before Google promised this, Marshall McLuhan, a Canadian communication theorist, in 1964 already foresaw the integration of computers in the workplace and automation becoming the trend in every office. Computers and computerization, or as we commonly refer now as the digitization or digitalization of libraries, have started to slowly adapt to this trend with initially transforming the bulky card catalogs to OPAC or online public access catalogs in order to create library databases, which contain the basic bibliographic information of the resources of the libraries. As the years pass, these library databases expanded to include other modules in the operation of the library, such as the acquisition module, the borrower's module, and other modules which were integrated into the library management system. So this technological development continued to infiltrate the processes in the library. Thus, the biggest challenge for librarians in the succeeding decade was how to become adept with the use of this technology. As they, or as we librarians, continue to disprove the obsolescence of library, we continue to learn the use and be familiar with these new technologies. Fast forward, most of the librarians now have become computer savvy. They refuse to become obsolete, so they conquer technology and use these to improve the delivery of library services to their clients. In fact, when the COVID-19 pandemic struck two years ago, we did not panic on the need to work from home and make our library resources available to our researchers. We were ready. We knew we could do it. And behold, library networks such as Nutrinet continue to be relevant, productive, and useful to its member partners and the researchers that they serve, even during the remote setup. We did not anticipate such disaster to happen, but we were prepared to shift to fully online computerized services. But of course, I must also make a disclaimer that not all libraries are equally prepared as the, others be, as the others because, again, the lack of budget for training and new technology prevented them to acquire the necessary uh, equipment. But the librarians of these libraries were not clueless. They knew what to do and tried to do what they can without their, within their means. But also this time, we librarians and information professionals have recognized that the clients that we serve have also become digital experts. They have learned to navigate and to put in full use the available resources that they can access 
freely online. Ultimately, this rapid change in user expectations and professional expertise with digital technology led to intense conversations within the library and academic communities about the roles and responsibilities of both libraries and corporate entities. As Diane, Markham, and Roger Schoenfeld describe in their book, Along Came Google, The History of Digitization in Libraries, and which I quote, Research libraries, libraries in particular, came under pressure to adapt to this emerging reality. The notion that any library, no matter how large, could collect comprehensively the knowledge that was being produced was clearly not yet possible. With digital technology, many of the quality control mechanisms that had been in place for decades, for example, peer review of both journal articles and books through publishers with established reputations now had to compete with preprints open access publications, and startup publishers with an array of review practices. Some even are predatory. Libraries no longer focused on collecting the best of the published records and began to think of their mission as wayfinding for their users. What is the universe of materials or a, on a particular topic? How does the reader find out about it? end of quote. We are now also challenged by the demand to make our institutional repositories readily accessible and available anywhere, anytime. More so, we are challenged by Google to make all published resources, books, journals, and other heritage materials readily available. What then would be the library's roles? This is now the challenge for libraries such as the members of Nutrinet have to face. How can we outsmart Google or do we have to? As we move on and emerge into the complete digitalization of libraries and making our institutional repositories readily accessible anytime to our target users, we do not need to complete, compete with Google. The challenge for us is how to make reliable and relevant resources that are available online more accessible to our researchers. And what we have in prints that are not available online be digitized and transformed to formats that are more readily accessible to them. We move slowly but surely while we let Google face numerous legal battles pertaining to copyright and intellectual property breaches. So, si hayaan na lang po natin si Google doon. It is not possible to completely build a universal libraries alone. Like what our predecessors in the library, library professions during the ancient time had dreamt of and Google wanted to achieve digitally. But with the help of the different library and information networks such as Nutrinet, we can aspire to come up with the most comprehensive digital collections of resources is specifically selected to fit the specific research needs of our community of users within the available resources that our libraries have. Thus, I enjoin you, my colleagues in Nutrinet, to continue to work together in building the most comprehensive repositories of information that respond to the needs not of all researchers, but of your target community of researchers, knowing that other networks of libraries would continue to do the same with the end goal of creating your version of universal libraries that are relevant, accurate, reliant, accessible, and readily available. Thank you very much and happy 35th anniversary to Nutrinet. Thank you so much, Dean Grace, for sharing that enlightening speech. Although the techn technological advancements infiltrated the libraries, we librarians refused to become obsolete and used these tools to our advantage. We tried to thrive and navigate the pandemic within our needs. And Nutrinet, indeed, has been a great help for resource sharing 
and in training its members. Dean Grace, we appreciate the time you took for this and of course for being with us in this momentous event. Before we are award the certificate, let us acknowledge the presence of OIC Dean of UPHSL, CIHMD, Ms. Gurley Baramo. And now to show our gratitude to Dean Grace for sharing her valuable time and effort, let me read the Certificate of Appreciation. The Nutrition Research Information Network, or NutriNet, presents this Certificate of Appreciation to Assistant Professor Mary Grace P. Golfo Barcelona for sharing her invaluable knowledge and expertise as keynote speaker during the NutriNet 35th anniversary celebration with the theme, NutriNet Thriving During the Pandemic, held on July 29, 2022 via Zoom, given this 29th day of July 2022, signed Imelda Angeles Agdepa, PhD, Chair, NutriNet Governing Board, Director for and Scientist for BOST FNRI. Once again, let us all give Dean Grace a virtual round of applause. Before Maraming we proceed, salamat po. Thank you, Dean. Before we proceed, may we request Dr. Milflor S. Gonzalez and Dr. Maria Lindy Masalinto, as well as our keynote speaker, Dean Mary Grace Golfo Barcelona, for a photo walk. Ready na po in 3, 2, 1. Wait lang po. Bakta pa po as backup in 3, 2, 1. Maraming salamat po. Okay, thank you everyone. For the rest of the participants, we will have another round of photo op later in the program. So please stand by. Thank you. Now to reminisce how Nutrinet came back came to be and to look back at what it has to go through in more than three decades, especially during the pandemic, let us watch this audiovisual presentation. This is how it began. Initial talks on forming a network started in 1986 where representatives from the nutrition community. The goal then was just to ease the burden of purchasing foreign subscriptions that were very expensive. On July 31, 1987, Dr. Rodolfo F. Laurentino, Director of DOSD FNRI, together with Deputy Director Irene D. Amores of DOSD SDII, spearheaded the formation of the Nutrition Research Information Network, or NutriNet. NutriNet is composed of institutions whose libraries and documentation sections of information centers have linked up to establish specialized information system in food, nutrition, and related fields. From the initial 14 members in 1987 to 1999, NutriNet, now on its 35th year, has 24 members. NutriNet keeps on expanding as more and more agencies and institutions join the network and support its mission and vision. The vision for the network's expansion is to establish a library network and achieve an efficient flow of information needed by nutrition-related research and development activities. NutriNet grows stronger through the involvement and commitment of its member institutions. The DOSD FNRI as a secretariat continues to extend its services while the support of network members are very noteworthy. NutriNet will keep up with the demand of the times and continue its role to improve food and nutrition research information system in the country.
Not your nets, many firsts. Very first capacitive building activity was a training course or workshop on basic librarianship. January to June 1993 was the maiden issue of Nutrinet newsletter. The first Nutri Fair was held on July 18 to 19, 1994 at the Siemens Center. The first Nutrinet evaluation and planning workshop was held on December 1 to 2, 1994 at the Benguet State University. Unilog Incorporated joined Nutrinet on April 16, 1999. A library turnover ceremony was held at the Laguna State Polytechnic University on December 2, 2013. January to June 2016 was the first re-engineered issue of Nutrinet newsletter. The first collaboration with professional organization was on February 19, 2020. While Nutrinet has been actively carrying out its mission, a news broke out on the spread of an infectious disease called coronavirus disease or COVID-19, which temporarily halted the network's activities. But Nutrinet stood firm and responded to the challenges of the times. With the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, Nutrinet continued to work tirelessly and organize activities that will help librarians and information professionals in their continuing education while ensuring safety by adhering to minimum health protocols. Activities during the peak and the surges of the pandemic included virtual monitoring visit, virtual briefing orientation, online seminar and virtual meetings among others meanwhile here's a sneak peek on the accomplishments of nutrinet in the middle of the pandemic technological innovations and the cooperation of nutrinet members made the online activities possible in 2020 like its first webinar on August 19, 2020 about preservation and conservation of information resource materials via Zoom and the addition of the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health to the network on November 10, 2020. In 2021, two webinars were conducted by Nutrinet through a collaboration with the Medical and Health Librarians Associations of the Philippines or MALA. On May 20, 2021, the first webinar as partners about 5S and food safety during the new normal was conducted and the Nutrinet Zoominar No. 1 about food buying and storing tips or tricks on September 30, 2021. The network also welcomed two universities and one agency as new members in 2021. The University of the East Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center Incorporated, the Department of Agriculture, Philippine Rice Research Institute, and the Southern Lady State University. Nitronet will continuously thrive in the face of any challenge. And we owe this to the valued contributions of all network members. Mabuhay ang Nutrinet. 35 years and counting pa po tayo. Special thanks to Ms. Maha Betsaida Desena and Mr. John Mark Villanueva of VOST FNRI for the wonderful AVP showcasing the brief history and important events of Nutrinet. It's really amazing to see the beginning of Nutrinet and how it continues to expand not only in terms of membership but also in its mission to serve and reach more people needing nutrition and health-related information. The pandemic did not hinder us to do more. Instead, it inspired us to innovate and Nutrinet was able to organize virtual activities. 
the succeeding presentations are institutional videos from some of the network's member agencies. Let us get to know more about them as we watch these videos. Thank you very much to the member agencies who prepared and shared their institutional videos. Moving right along to one of the highlights of Nutrinet's 35th anniversary celebration, let us now witness the renewal of commitment of the 24 member agencies. Nutrinet Memorandum of Understanding Know All Men by These Presents This Memorandum of Understanding is made and entered into by and between the members. Whereas the Nutrition Research Information Network has been established in 1987 to form an information network on food and nutrition research and development. Whereas the Nutrinet's goal is to promote and improve the flow of nutrition R&D information in the country by facilitating exchange of information among different nutrition and related agencies. Whereas it has been recognized that the Nutrinet is vital in research, planning, policy making, nutrition education and services, poverty alleviation, and other social and health related activities. Whereas it has been recognized that there is an improved flow of food and nutrition information with Nutrinet's contribution and there is a need to sustain the networking activities among the members of Nutrinet enhance easy access, storage, and retrieval of information. Whereas, the Nutrinet recognizes the importance of information communication technology as a tool of the network towards attaining global competitiveness. Whereas, the DOSD FNRI serves as the focal institution of the Nutrinet and member institutions or organizations agree to renew their commitments every five years to improve and enhance the network resources. Whereas the Nutrinet members believe that improved food and nutrition information system is vital and necessary for national development. Now, therefore, for and in coordination of the foregoing premises and of the terms and conditions, clauses and stipulations herein below contained the parties herein do hereby and by this presents expressly and mutually agree as follows undertakings subject to the respective rights and obligations as set out in this understanding the party shall cooperate and endeavor to achieve the following responsibilities of participating members participating members shall for its exclusive account timely properly and adequately perform the following 
provide library services to the staff, students, and faculty of member institutions, subject to rules and regulations of the host library or information center. Appoint permanent and alternate representative student network who will attend and actively participate in the network's quarterly meetings and special meetings as scheduled. Participate actively in network activities, which may include Provision of consultation, advice, and expertise to member institution Support for staff participation in fora, workshops, and continuing education opportunities and staff assigned to serve as member in Nutrinet working committees, task forces, and working groups. Benefits of being a member. Printed materials and online publications provided regularly. Interlibrary loans, literature searches, referrals to individual and institutional sources of information and expertise, and free attendance to continuing education activities like seminars. This understanding shall take effect upon signing of this document and shall be effective for a period of five years, unless sooner terminated for valid reasons and upon agreement by all parties. In witness thereof, the parties have hereunto signed this instrument at the Gig City on 29th day of July 2022. It is such a joy seeing all the member agencies in this event, even online for now, renewing their commitment and support to all of Nutrinet endeavors. Hopefully, all member agency representatives really come together very soon, one day, and see each other face to face. Again, thank you very much to all the member agencies. Let me also take this opportunity to ask for your help in promoting Nutrinet to our colleagues from other institutions, those who have not joined us yet. Please help us encourage them to participate in our network's mission. At this point, let us have another Flashback Friday, like what Dr. Agdepa mentioned earlier. In the next audiovisual presentation, you will see some of our very important former colleagues in Nutrinet. They have greatly contributed in starting and in sustaining the network. I am excited to present to you an AVP of testimonials from one of the founders and former members of Nutrinet. Let us all watch this. My fondest memory was uh, meeting uh, new members and getting acquainted with uh, their libraries as well as their uh, own institutes. So I'm ha I uh, am happy, happy with that because uh, that would uh, in, uh, that would tell me uh, the activities of the other members and the state of their libraries. Uh, yung joining and sitting, seeing yung tech co members during meeting is like a family working together. So yun yung parang na ano sa akin yung memorable. Uh, marami actually ako <laughs> memorable experience sa Nutrinet. Siyempre yung monthly meetings with the members para kasing kapamilya mo na rin yung Nutrinet. So, isang nakakamiss na experience din yung sa Nutripair. Kasi uh, may mga exhibitors na i-invite yung Nutrinet. Tapos yung mga member uh, par, uh, mga member institutions they invite din mga estudyante from other schools. Ang um natatak sa aking uh, isip is 
whenever we have this um, MOA signing, one time is uh, FNRI, and then uh, we have at ATI, and one of the more glamorous event was in uh, Sheraton Yatayon or in one of the hotels in Manila. So I thank the Nutrinet for sustaining this activity. I was able to uh, join yung yung mga milestones ng Nutrinet katulad ng 25th uh, anniversary and the 30th anniversary nandun ako kasama ako very memorable yung mga yung mga occasions na yun sa akin ang most memorable experience ko during my Nutrinet time ay eh yung 30th anniversary ng Nutrinet tapos lahat ng mga members nakaputi kami may pearl kasi parang pearl anniversary din yun Siguro talaga ang most memorable sa akin ay eh, yung yung being able to uh, share information and resources to the member agencies, their staff, and their students. Kasi in uh, during the times na napakahirap ng ng mga information, probably uh, uh, for one because uh, very expensive ang pag-purchase ng mga ne- ng mga mga journals. It was Nutrinet that uh, helped. Uh, one agency and uh, one agency to get access to journals or yung mga publications that are otherwise expensive. So, yun, uh, very rewarding yung experience na yun. I was one of the most active and uh, lagi nila akong pinapasabak sa mga MCing jobs, MC moderator of programs. Minsan nabibigla na lang ako nagla akong sasabihan ako pala yung mag-EMC ng program. Solid. Nutrinet is a network that is really solid in spite of the differences in the various agencies. Talagang compact siya in spite of the difference in the various various uh, representatives. Nutrinet is resilient. Because Nutrinet is capable of standing uh, shock without permanent uh, deformation or, or rupture. Hindi kayo uh, uh, nagwawatak-watak. Uh, and it is the resiliency. What uh, I would des- how I would describe Nutrinet in one word, I would call it matatak. Because this lasted for 35 years. And in fact, it has the potential of going for another 35 years. <laughs> fulfilling. I am fulfilled na ano, yung Nutrinet has reached its 35th anniversary kasi na ano, na-attain natin yung goal na isa sa mga goals na gusto natin ma-achieve nung i- i-lay down, i-design natin itong information system na ito. Ang word talaga sa akin ay rewarding. Rewarding for me in terms of uh, being able to share resources uh, through the network. Rewarding in terms of meeting colleagues um, from private and uh, uh, government institutions. Learning. It is a continuous and mas malawak yung kaalaman mo na hindi ka confined lang sa library mo. So it's a uh, parang continuous learning enjoying the nutrient. Unforgettable. Kasi, uh, I get to meet different people. Hindi lang mga librarians, kundi iba-iba. So, uh, nakaka-visit ako ng mga iba-ibang library din. Uh, grateful to be part <laughs> of the nutrient. Uh, kagaya nung sinabi ko a while ago, yun nga, hindi lang librarians ang um, na kasama mo dito, mga nutritionists din. At the same time, yung pakikisalamuha mo sa ibang kasamahan. Hindi nga lang librarians, uh, nutritionists as well. And then yung 
nagkaroon ka ng network with them plus uh, napuntahan mo rin yung ibang mga libraries nila Siguro more members from provincial level, regional membership. At saka in, ano, yung Nutrinet sa new platform, like magkaroon ng Nutrinet program sa radio. Mas ano pa, mas, at mas tumagu pa yung member ng Nutrinet para mas maraming makakatulong kung ano yung mga projects, aktibidades na gustong gawin ng Nutrine. So, I hope that the Nutrinet will continue to expand not only in membership but only also in its projects that are uh, relevant to the uh, members, especially to the uh, scientists and uh, researchers in the uh, the member institutes. I I really wish Nutrinet will continue to be relevant. Kahit ilang taon na ang ang uh, darating, uh, it will continue to be relevant despite despite the uh, yung mabilis na change sa technology and that the Nutrinet staff will continue to to learn. So, yun ang aking dream for Nutrinet na both the network and the staff will continue to be relevant uh, sa mga susunod na taon so that it can justify its existence for siguro hanggang 50 years hanggang mag golden anniversary ang Nutrinet uh, Simply lang, uh, you keep on being attuned to the changing world people will just uh, maybe using artificial intelligence, your AI Maybe you need to look at that as uh, another tool uh, that our network should look at. So, siguro yun, uh, keep updating and be attuned to the changing world of information, technology, and science and technology. I hope in the next coming years, Nutrinet will be, ano, ma, will be known as the Philippines uh, Center for Nutrition and Related in, uh, Institution Information. Sa so, ano hindi lang dito sa Philippines kundi internationally. Sana maging international na. Uh, sana mag maging member ang Nutrinet sa mga international na association din. To continue its good work, wag siyang mawawala sa eksena. Sige lang siya. Kaya, sige lang. Continue the good work. And uh, do not give up if challenges arrive. Uh, my message to the present TECO members, continue to serve the Nutrinet and provide more CPD activities. <laughs> for the benefits of the members and uh, nga, more more projects and more power to all of you and good luck to all your future activities. Congratulations to, to Nutrinet and to all the TECO members. Sana maging committed din kayo, hindi lang member lang, tapos na maging supportive, maging committed sa mga objectives ng Nutrinet. And I wish na you continue what you are doing at lalo pang mag-increase ang members na Nutrinet. So, ang masasabi ko lang sa kanila ay keep on attending and participating in all Nutrinet Nutrinet meetings and activities. At mm, may beneficyo tayo yung makukuha dito and at the same time, makakakontribute din tayo sa Nutrinet. Hello, Nutrinet members. I am very, very happy to greet all of you a happy 35th anniversary. If you just uh, take a look 
backward, you will see all the efforts of your lolas, of your predecessors, and uh, we are very happy that you are continuing our what we have begun. And please do continue the good work. Keep keep the nutrient going, going, growing, developing, progressing, and thank you for keeping this nutrient alive. Congratulations to the Nutrinet members. You have done a good job, and uh, I hope uh, uh, you continue nyo yung ano yung dedication na ano mag uh, mag prosper itong ating uh, Nutrinet para ma establish at ma consider na siya, eto eto ang Nutrinet ay ang pinaka ano pinaka center ng nutrition and health related information dito sa Philippines. Ang masasabi ko sa present Nutrinet members, congratulations. Some of them perhaps were were there at the early part of uh, the existence of Nutrinet. Continue the good fight of um, ano ba to, yung uh, advancing nutrition information. Kasi ang FNRI being the premier agency for uh, nutrition research, ang napaka- there is such a great wealth of ano, nutrition information. So, kailangan palaganap. And the other agencies likewise. Marami, mga universities, ang dami nilang, dami nilang hawak na information na hindi rin lang nakakalabas. So, keep up the good fight. So, yun, congratulations and keep it up and stay healthy. Uh, well, I'd like to congratulate them for being one with us in this uh, Nutrinet. I'd like to mention that uh, knowledge may be limited, but imagination can create knowledge. And, uh, and thus, Nutrinet must nourish that knowledge through a strong network of knowledge keepers. So, congratulations, uh, Nutrinet, on your 35th year ang tagal na pala and hope another 35 years will come at hopefully on your 40th uh, we still be around uh, to wish you all your uh, the best and the years to come I would uh, say thank you very much for your dedication and uh, loyalty to Nutrinet I'm hopeful that with their uh, with your active uh, participation uh, in all the projects and activities of the network uh, nutrinet uh, will see another 35 years <laughs> what i'd like to emphasize here now is continue doing this this is for don't stop it i know there are other networks that we still have like the D, so many that we have started. Maybe they're just sleeping, unlike you who continues to be very active. Nutrient. Don't give up. You'll do it, you can do it as long as there are people who are very much devoted to you. You can do it. Let us all give a virtual applause to show our love to the former members of Nutrinet. I believe some of them are joining us today, and we would like to thank all of you for all the hard work and love for Nutrinet. Let us also acknowledge the presence of former Nutrinet Governing Board Chair, former DOST FNRI Director, and former NFT Chair President, Dr. Rodolfo F. Florentino, former Nutrinet Governing Board Board Chair and former DOSD FNRI Director, Dr. Corazon V.C. Barba, former Nutrinet Governing Board Chair and former DOSD FNRI Director, Dr. Mario V. Capanzana, 
former Nutrinet Technical Committee Chair and former Chief SRS, Dr. Zinaida V. Narciso. And we'd also like to acknowledge former Nutrinet Technical Committee members, Ms. Gina Canceran, Ms. Maribel Palafox, Ms. Rita Yusi, Ms. Rosario Henato, and Ms. Victoria Sandoval. As we all know, Nutrinet is one of the long-standing network. And through this network, colleagues became family. We become family. More than sharing of resources and best practices, the members cherished being, being with colleagues. And with this, we will continue to expand, not only in terms of more members, but let us continue to be relevant, both the network and its members. And as we wrap up today's event, may we call on the Nutrinet Governing Board Vice Chair and DOST STII Director for Director Richard P. Burgos. Let us all give Director Burgos a virtual round of applause. Good morning, and uh, let me greet Nutrinet on the occasion of its 35th anniversary. At the end of the 35th anniversary celebration of Nutrinet, it's a great time to reflect on how Nutrinet has been produced and perfected by revolutions. Remember, 35 years ago, 1987, when Nutrinet was created, this was a time of a big revolution, Edison Revolution as we call it, all right? Totoo po yun, nangyari po yun. But there was an opportunity to put together the network of libraries and documentation sections of institutions related to information on food, nutrition, and related fields, right? The second revolution, I'd like to say, is really the internet revolution. The way that we do things has been forever changed because of the internet. And this also created another opportunity for us to come together and ensure that our information in the different silos of government and private sector organizations can be made available to a public thirsty for information on food and nutrition. Right? The third revolution, I'd like to say, is that one presented by the pandemic where entire health systems and even our information systems have been put to the test, all right? So, through all these revolutions, Nutrinet has persisted and remained steadfast in its commitment to make available information to the people that so needs it, right? And uh, so it's a great time for, for rejoicing that we are still here. And we were able to weather especially the latest uh, hazard which is uh, brought to us by the pandemic. Right? What did we do? We continued. We persisted. And even if we could not meet physically, we met virtually using all forms, all platforms of communication. All right? So um, <clears throat> I'm very happy to note that uh, there is greater participation now of the private sector. All right? And we have really moved you know, from being uh, metropolitan area centric to more regional um, focus all right? and uh, generating membership from institutions outside of metropolitan areas. So I am delighted that we are taking this opportunity to renew our commitment to Nutrinet because our task is ever more crucial, relevant, and even urgent in the face of a persistent malnutrition, stunting, and uh, even poor academic performance of Filipino children. We have a lot more to work ahead of us, but for now, let us uh, take comfort that Nutrinet is thriving through the pandemic and has survived and even been strengthened because of the revolutions that have shocked us in, in this past 30 years. Nutrinet has become stronger and more relevant 
because of the disruptions brought about by uh, uh, revolutions in the last 37 years. If we have survived them, we will continue to become uh, relevant well into the future. So congratulations once again, and let's enjoy this celebration together. Thank you very much, Director Burgos, for sharing a very meaningful message. This concludes our program this morning. Nutrinet indeed is thriving through the pandemic and was strengthened by the different revolutions in the past 35 years. We survived them, so let us continue and strive to be relevant. One final request before we part ways. Kindly turn on your camera for the photo op and let us all give a big smile for being a part of Nutrinet's 35th anniversary. Magandang araw po sa lahat. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo. Ayan. Pwede na po. Meron po tayong tatlong slide po. Kaya kung ready na po tayo. Tokbet, tanggalin nyo na lang po yung ano, virtual background. Kasi mahalo sa mukha nyo. Kaya tatanggalin lang po ni Tokbet ang kanyang virtual background. Ayan po sa lahat. Sige po, ready na po. In three, slide number one po. In three, two, One, ito lang po, slide number two. Three, two, one. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Luna, kahit nasa biyahe po kayo, naka-join po kayo. Slide number three po. In three, two, one. Maraming salamat po. Back to you po, Ms. Jonah. Once again, Thank you very much to our governing board, technical committee members, adopted libraries, our keynote speaker, former members, MALA president and board of trustees, and to all our dear participants. Happy 35th anniversary, Nutrinet. I am Jonah B. E. Arevalo, librarian of the Ateneo de Manila University School of Medicine and Public Health. Enjoy the rest of the day and let us all keep safe. Thank you. This is how it began. Initial talks on forming a network started in 1986 where representatives from the nutrition community. The goal then was just to ease the burden of purchasing foreign subscriptions that were very expensive. On July 31, 1987, Dr. Rodolfo F. Florentino, Director of DOSD FNRI, together with Deputy Director Irene D. Amores of DOSD SDII, spearheaded the formation of the Nutrition Research Information Network, or NutriNet. NutriNet is composed of institutions whose libraries and documentation sections of information centers have linked up to establish specialized information systems in food, nutrition, and related fields. From the initial 14 members in 1987 to 1999, NutriNet, now on its 35th year, has 24 members. Nutrinet keeps on expanding as more and more agencies and institutions join the network and support its mission and vision. The vision for the network's expansion is to establish a library network and achieve an efficient flow of information needed by nutrition-related research and development activities. 
Nutrinet grows stronger through the involvement and commitment of its member institutions. The DOSD FNRI as a secretariat continues to extend its services while the support of network members are very noteworthy. Nutrinet will keep up with the demand of the times and continue its role to improve food and nutrition research information system in the country. Not your nets, many firsts. Very first capacitive building activity was a training course or workshop on basic librarianship. January to June 1993 was the maiden issue of Nutrinet newsletter. The first Nutri Fair was held on July 18 to 19, 1994 at the Siemens Center. The first Nutrient Evaluation and Planning Workshop was held on December 1-2, 1994 at the Benguet State University. Unilog Incorporated joined Nutrinet on April 16, 1999. A library turnover ceremony was held at the Laguna State Polytechnic University on December 2, 2013. January to June 2016 was the first re-engineered issue of Nutrinet Newsletter. The first collaboration with professional organization was on February 19, 2020. While Nutrinet has been actively carrying out its mission, a news broke out on the spread of an infectious disease called Coronavirus Disease or COVID-19 which temporarily halted the network's activities. But Nutrinet stood firm and responded to the challenges of the times. With the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, Nutrinet continued to work tirelessly and organize activities that will help librarians and information professionals in their continuing education while ensuring safety by adhering to minimum health protocols. Activities during the peak and the surges of the pandemic included virtual monitoring visit, virtual briefing orientation, online seminar, and virtual meetings, among others. Meanwhile, here's a sneak peek on the accomplishments of Nutrinet in the middle of the pandemic. Technological innovations and the cooperation of Nutrinet members made the online activities possible in 2020, like its first webinar on August 19, 2020 about preservation and conservation of information resource materials via Zoom and the addition of the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health to the network on November 10, 2020. In 2021, two webinars were conducted by Nutrinet through a collaboration with the Medical and Health Librarians Associations of the Philippines or MALA. On May 20, 2021, the first webinar as partners about 5S and food safety during the new normal was conducted and the Nutrinet Zoominar No. 1 about food buying and storing tips or tricks on September 30, 2021. The network also welcomed two universities and one agency as new members in 2021. 
the University of the East Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center Incorporated, the Department of Agriculture, Philippine Rice Research Institute, and the Southern Lady State University. Nitronet will continuously thrive in the face of any challenge. And we owe this to the valued contributions of all network members. Mabuhay ang Nutrinet! 35 years and counting pa po tayo.